Hey guys, Compulsion84 here. Today I've got a quick Audacity tutorial to show you how to add a couple effects in uh, post-processing to improve your audio quality. This is Audacity. This is what most people use to edit their audio, or I should say to record their audio on YouTube. Uh, you can also use it to just do voiceovers. It does all sorts of stuff, but it's pretty much just a high-end uh, voice recording software, and it's completely free. So the couple of things that I want to show you real quick are my notes and I'll just show these on screen and flip through them so you can see if you want to pause it. So I've got some audio processing orders, a trial steps and a second set of trials and let's see and then some effects I'll talk about later. The first thing you want to do in Audacity is make sure you're exporting to an uncompressed wave which is 16-bit PCM and then you want to make sure that you've got your your uh, recording project rate set properly. So I'm using an AT2020 USB. I'll put a link in the description below if you happen to like this one. This records at 44.1 kilohertz. So you gotta look up your mic spec sheet, find out what it needs, and then set right down, set down here in the lower left what your recording rate is. So here I've got a sample recording just to show you guys you know, how this all works. So to export it properly, you go to export audio, and you need to make sure that you go to wave and that's the 16-bit PCM and you know you can tinker around a little bit I wouldn't recommend mp3 because it is a compressed format and you will get some quality degradation there's four major effects people use in audacity those are noise removal compression equalization and normalization now uh, based on the person you ask the order they run those in are very subjective I originally ran it in the order of noise removal compression equalization then normalize and I found that gave me low volume levels and it didn't normalize it properly. So what I'm currently trying and seems to be working pretty well is to noise remove it, normalize it, run compression, and then finally equalize. The only issue I found with this is when I equalize it, it's adding some peaks again and it can clip that slightly if I've been very close to my, uh, to my upper limit. But again, you get the idea. It's the same effects, just different orders. So what I'll do right now is show you what I typically do when I edit audio. So I've got just like a little dummy recording I made a couple minutes earlier. You'll notice at the beginning I've got a lot of just dead air, and that's very intentional. When you want to do noise removal, you need to have a good amount of just, for lack of a better word, silent. And this is to set a baseline. So I usually do about 15 seconds. Some people do about 10, but you know, it only takes a little bit of time. So when I go to record, I quite literally hit play and just sit here. I don't make any noise, I don't move, I don't click, nothing. And I just wait. Um, the thing you need to make sure you do before you do this is to make sure that all fans, air conditioners, etc., anything that makes a lot of background noise are off. So I've got my 15 seconds of silence. So what you do is you select that and you gotta make sure you don't select any clicks or anything like that. You go to effect, noise reduction, and this is the important part, is get noise profile. So it's now read this as a baseline. So now I'm actually gonna apply, so I did control A to select all, go to noise reduction again, but this time I'm gonna hit the effect. These sliders control the, the strength of the effect, you want it to be on reduce. The default is a little bit higher um, than 12, which is I think 14 or 15, which applies a stronger noise reduction. I don't necessarily need that, and I don't want to damage my audio too much, because whenever you do an effect, you're messing with the audio, and if you do too much, you can you can lower the quality. So I just want a slight noise reduction, so I use a 12, because my room is reasonably quiet. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now what you need to do is watch this line. See how it's a little squiggle, there's a little bit of noise in the signal? Hit that, and wow. That's cleaner than it normally is. Normally there's a little bit of jitter and a few pops and stuff, but I was actually being pretty quiet. So that's really good. So that's the first thing that I do. And the next thing that I currently do is to normalize it. And what this does is, so you've got a bunch of signals, some with the amplitude is, is relatively low, then it jumps up high. You never want to get into the red. So if you watch up here in the upper right, levels, loud. <laughs> okay, you can see that I'm almost at negative three. So this is actually pretty good, even though I was being relatively loud. And what normalizing does is, it tries to equalize things, so it pushes down some of the peaks and then pulls up some of the mid-range and lows. So again, I'll select all, go to effect, normalize. Now one of the settings, I believe these first two are defaultly like this. Move DC offset as if, as if your recording is for some reason not centered at zero. I don't even know how you do that, but you don't want it. And then this other one, this, this brings about some debate. I like to normalize it to, an ampli to a certain peak because I wanna make this as loud as possible. You can tweak it. Um, this defaultly comes at I think zero or negative one. But again, because I wanna be applying effects after the fact, 
or I should say effects after this one, I want to make sure I leave a little bit of headroom. So, you know, if my max is here, I want to move this to here so I can play in here. So I switch this to negative two. Again, this is a little bit of personal preference trial and error. So I'll run that and you can see how the waveform changed a little bit. So these got elongated. They actually all did because I wasn't at my peak. So it gets it a little closer. So now I'm going to compress it. And this, what it does is it pretty much squishes down some of your upper peaks. And when we're talking about stretching the waveform, I like to make this up to zero dB after compressing, which will kind of stretch things out closer to zero. So this will make your quiet stuff louder. And if anything clips or is close to it, it'll push it down a little bit. The threshold is actually the dB range that's going to be really touching. So again, it, it can be a little more severe. To the left is more severe compression. I like it to be a little less slight. So I use negative 10 or negative 12. Make sure this first checkbox is checked and hit OK. Now, if you have a long recording or a slow computer, this will sometimes pop up and take a while. And now you can see how I've got some recordings that are close to clipping, but my quieter stuff is now uh, at a much higher, better volume. And finally, I'm going to equalize. And this is, again, huge personal preference. Uh, for some guys, I like to add bass boost. I don't like to do that because sometimes I get boomy on my own. I do like to add a little bit of treble because sometimes I get a little monotone unintentionally. And I'll zoom in a little bit, so I'll undo it. You can see how this kind of rounds out, I shouldn't say rounds out, kind of fills out some of my recordings. So that's, that's equalized, not. So I'll do not equalized. Hello guys, it's Compulsion84. This is, and then I'll equalize it. Hello guys, it's Compulsion84. So that's just pretty much, you know, whatever effect you want, you can uh, do with this. Some people like to, you can play around with this a lot if you know what you're doing. You can make it sound like old time radio or like it's through a speaker or a telephone, all sorts of stuff. But there's a bunch of presets in here you can tinker around with. So now I've got pretty much a recording that's ready to go. Background noise has been recorded. Test recording. Hello guys, it's Compulsion84. So that's my, my test recording. Let me do a whole bunch of undos. All right, and now try it again. Background noise has been recorded. Test recording. Hello guys, it's Compulsion84. And for lack of a better word, that just sounds a little bit duller and a little bit less full. And if I had some, you know, noise or a little bit, it would have it in there. So that's that's pretty much all I do with my recordings. Again, uh, tweak your order to see what you like. Do a little bit of research into some of these options. If you have a lot of background noise or none at all, you can you can adjust these settings. If you find out you you've clipped your microphone, uh, you can tinker with some of the thresholds. The best recording needs no modifications whatsoever. However, that's ideal and not really realistic. You want to do the least amount of changes you can do to your recording to make it sound as good as possible. Whenever you're tweaking it or playing with it, you can slightly damage or slightly mess with your recording. So don't overdo your compression. Don't overdo any of these effects or else it'll start to sound, for lack of a better word, like garbage. So um, less is more here. Do things in increments. Try it out. The nice thing about Audacity is you can save it and select for this one. I can save it as, I often do this, of edits. So now I could do like edits one, edits two. And finally, I'll show you just to export real quick. Export audio, recording edits. I've got my Wave 64, excuse me, Wave 16 bit. Hit save. And if it was longer, it would have popped up and taken a second. But that, that's it. Now I have a Wave file that I can drop into my editing program and, you know, go to town. Um, there are a lot more effects in here that I won't necessarily dive into. I'll show those again. Other people like to use some of these other effects. I don't, again, like to overdo it. I'll just show you Amplify real quick because this actually comes in handy. So when you talk about uh, when you've got like a really loud throat clear or hear something just a little bit loud. So I go here and I go to Effect, Amplify, and this can actually lower or increase the volume. So I'll do negative three. So it lowers that whole selected region by negative three. And I'll do it again. So you can kind of take something to nothing if it's really loud. Alternatively, you could take a quiet region and I'll do a positive three. And now you can see how that went up. Now, when you raise this, if you raise something that's really quiet, it can start to get really low quality. So if you've got something that's like whispering and you go too far, it might start sounding really bad. So just, you know, you've been warned. <clears throat> 
A uh, couple other things that people like to use are, are fade out or generate silence. Those are pretty self-explanatory. If you want music to taper off, you can fade it out. And if you need to just get rid of a part but not delete it, you can generate silence. and It'll just go to a zero waveform. These three other things I don't like to use. Some people swear by them. Hard limiter is like a stronger compressor. If you, for some reason, need that, you can do some searches and tinker with that. And then some people like to use high or low pass filters to reduce high or low frequency noise. And these are quite literally like signal, well, this is all signal processing, but these are similar to, you know, you could actually do this on like circuit boards and stuff like this. I don't like to use it just because I find it kind of muddies up the recordings or kind of like rounds it out. I'll just show you a, a low pass filter real quick. So you can see it just kind of, it's just kind of roughing, it's taking off some of the edges for lack of a better word. Background noise has been recorded. Background noise. So again, that was with the default value, so this isn't a perfect uh, display, but it just makes it sound like garbage. And if, if you wanna, if you find out your recordings just need something, you can run a very weak or very, a very weak high or low pass filter, but that's not my thing. So again, the, the four things that you want to try out are noise removal, equalize, normalize, and compression. So that's how you take a just bass recording and jazz it up a little bit, you know, try to just improve the quality a little bit. Whenever I'm not live streaming, I like to do this because it just makes things sound a little bit better. Um, I don't, I, I can make myself sound a little bit less uh, drab and then I can get rid of some of the unpleasant things in my recordings. So, I hope this was helpful. If you haven't seen me before, I'm Compulsion84. I make gun, gaming, and gadget-related videos. If you take a look on the left, you can see some of the links for those. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.